International shine. It's for entrepreneurs in the entertainment field. And tonight we have some great guests for you. So keep tuned. Here we go at the Dream Machine USA. Telling you, lift your glasses, get all your hors d'oeuvres ready, because we're going to have fun tonight. You're at the Dream Machine USA at ABG Studios and our TV studios, Mini Woodstock Festival. So join us. Have fun tonight. We've got some great guests for you. Yay! Keep tuned, everybody. And here's Lucy Lipper. Yeah! Yeah! Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Mini Woodstock. Festival TV SB show. It's Lucy Looker, the reporter of Four Eve Stars International. Thank you for watching Mini Woodstock today. It's exciting because we always have some great entrepreneurs coming on here. And today I have an incredible artist. Um, he does lots and lots of things. He, he, you know, and I'm really excited to introduce you to him. He's a local person. He's born in Santa Barbara. So. Get your drinks, they may not be alcoholic, get your hors d'oeuvres, and let's get on with the Mini Woodstock Festival. Cheers. I forget that name, Tim Smith. This guy does many things from, I do believe you've jumped out of planes. Uh, not um, quite that not far, quite but jump I used to be um, into extreme sports like snowboarding and surfing, and then uh, had to calm down a little bit. You did? Yeah. You were getting a little bit too Get hurt crazy. a little bit. Oh, you yeah. were? Oh, my gosh. Stuff like that. So toned it down to art, and that's been in my life forever. I think is because I knew from a young age that, one, that I liked art, and I also knew from a young age that I... Uh, uh, I didn't like uh, math and such. Uh, you know, I could do it, but I wasn't as into math, and uh, uh, I wasn't as methodical of a person. Uh, and uh, you know, I knew I was an artist, and I think uh, family knew it too, and such. And uh, so I I started uh, sketching and doing small stuff when I was a kid. And when everyone would be paying attention in class, I they'd catch me sketching and do really? doodling on my homework and whatnot. Oh so my it it all started, you know, there Beautiful. and and uh, and even before with art camps, you know. So it was kind of almost um, uh, like given to me, you know, like it was this like this great thing I was blessed with that just happened with you know that I. I started, um, my aunt saw that I liked art, and my aunt Cleary is an artist, and uh, th my, that whole side, they're really creative on my mom, my mother's side, so you, you know. So you think you got this from your mom's side? I, I think so, you, yeah. I believe so, and yeah. then I got the business aspect, which is nice, yeah, from yeah. my father's side, because he was, he uh, uh, owned a store back in the day here in Santa Barbara, and he was always about more of the business This is technique. your dad? Yeah. So what, and, th that's, and... What's your dad's name again? Mark. Mark, Mark Smith. Mark yes. Smith. So mm -hmm. Mark Smith had his own 
store here, shop? Uh, well, he ran a, sh a shop, yeah, in uh, clothing. It was a clothing and uh, kind of just store in Isla Vista back, day, back oh, in the day. Really? Yeah. In yeah. So a lot of people know your dad then. Uh, somewhat, I would store, say, maybe, I guess. I yeah. guess. Yeah, the older generations. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, art it just came to me once, like I said before, glass blowing. Once that came to me, it was glass blowing forever. But uh, <laughs> but um, I also I'll never lose the passion for, um, for painting art. and for just the well, art in general. What stimulated you to do something sort of like this with somebody sitting around a sofa? So these were I was taking uh, figure art, which figure drawing, which is a people and and uh, and focusing on uh, uh, the actual uh, figure itself. And a lot of times we use people. You know, it'd be like a still life, oh, a still as life. you know, out yeah. of it as right. drawing right. figures right. and really <laughs> narrowing down the. The, um, the look and a lot most of the time it's people and these this was actually a college project and then I took the that college project and uh, and I hired a, a, a friend and slash model and did a painting of or uh, this is actually chalk pastel of, of her too and uh, so you know uh, I've kind of uh, washed around all over in every single kind of medium I could find, whether it be <laughs> chalk or whether it be pastel or sketching. And, um, and, uh, I guess the, if I were to ask myself why is, is because I enjoy it and right. because I, uh, one, it's infinite. And another reason is that it's, uh, I feel like doing something, and it's and it satisfies that that satisfies my soul. Satisfies the need, you know, for my that. need for doing wh whatever. And um, so, uh, what about all these trips that you do? I mean, I know you go off to Alaska and as well as Hawaii. Yeah, but, that's where know, I learned the glass. I mean, I you know it was a really hard time to try and get this guy to <laughs> actually interview him because he was like here, there, and everywhere. I have been gone. Yeah. Yes, you have. So, you know, the the escaping to Alaska, do you actually do all your art all the time when you're anywhere? Is it Does it just, like, get a hold of you that way? You know, yeah. Uh, it depends what I'm doing up there, how busy uh, the trip is or whatnot. But a lot of my creativity comes from, uh, comes from, and or um, how would you say, like, landscape, like, uh, inspiration? In, in, in oh, all my inspiration inspiring. for that comes from those trips. Oh, those trips as beautiful places to actually paint and Com stuff. Oh, oh yes. Oh my gosh. Who we who we spend our time with and right. who we meet and uh, that's a big part of all the art is in and being an entrepreneur as you say is knowing people and being able to uh, connect like this and uh, really have an intelligent conversation or be able to um, um, sit down and focus long enough to make something. Something like that. How long does it take to do this this uh, glass blowing? Like when you, what do you do? You come up with an idea. Is that what you do? Some are more of an idea, like this. This here, like would be more of an uh, something drawn, literally drawn out, kind of. And then some of this stuff is more of a freestyle kind of just drawing on there and kind. Of, this is when I have a lot of fun, you know, is is doing. Uh, is doing jewelry and uh, things like this, like a bird. This is a bird feeder, and uh, and this crazy. was just a, a blast. It was my father's birthday, and so I was like, oh, I'm gonna make a bird feeder. I threw it. So I threw a, a yeah. A so bird? and uh, he loves bird. My father loves his garden is full of birds and bird feeders. So I I actually all my bird feeders I throw a bug on there. So this one I threw a little dragonfly in, oh, and cool. this takes a long time, you know, to to learn. Uh, th that was the question you asked, I believe. To learn it itself took me years. Back in Kauai is where I actually did oh. my first lesson. Wow! So you were like hanging out there, or you worked there, or you, they were doing lessons? I or? was hanging out there, and I started hanging around in the shop for a long time, and or a good amount of time, and they were like, "What's up, man? You know, and you want to take a lesson?" And wow! And I said, "Okay." You this know? is what I like. Yeah, and then after that, I said the, the progression goes up really quick. But um, to actually sit down and focus and make a piece, something like this, a candlestick holder, this, this takes about an hour or maybe a little le less or more, more or less than an hour or an hour. But Cause really. so, so it's like, do you have, so basically you do blueprints 
of everything that you do in a way is that a good way to put it yeah that, that you actually a, a more design a blueprint more intricate stuff you wow know? you know whereas you get these designs over here like these these jars and uh yeah. and bases these are more of a, a freestyle uh we call them wig wags of the spirals and whatnot you they're know? very pretty very yeah. beautiful thank you so how if if you had to explain how you blow glass because a part of me doesn't quite get it because I see glass, right? And I'm sure a lot of people out there see glass as this is glass and it breaks, right? How do you possibly make it into this shape? Because yeah, it's already broken glass, you know. Right? No, so, yeah. So you know, is it like? Well, you explain it because it's very dumbfounding for me. You know, that's one thing I've become a little better at explaining over the years because so many people see that and they go, wow, off the bat, well, how did that, how did you do that? You how know? do you get that? So the best, like that? the best thing I could explain it is glass starts in a, in a silver or in a perfectly clear um, uh, different size tubing or it starts in different size rods. And now it's you're never touching the glass with your hands, right? So it's always. Do you have big gloves on or something? No, nothing like that. You're Surgical always gloves? using no. You're always using a stick of glass, oh. and that is what melts oh. and pulls away oh, the other glass. I yeah. What you're saying there. Yeah. I so think it's. I understand. So it's it a gives glass a little glass understanding. Thing right. With a torch, a blowtorch. Right. Yeah, that's exactly a right. Glass on glass thing with a blowtorch. Right, exactly. Okay. And everything wow. starts, th this is a perfect example. Everything is either tube or rod, we call it. And so you so, actually blew the glass and put the tube at the size that you wanted it onto the tube. Uh, onto, onto, the, the onto the rod. Onto exactly. the rod, exactly. Onto the rod. And wow. now if I wanted to make a champagne glass, yeah. I, I would simply, I, I would, well not simply, but I would go in <laughs> <laughs> with the tube still connected um, before I put it on here yeah. and I would literally melt it around and then blow it and pull and it creates more of a circular. So when you say blow, yeah, you're literally blow. doing a, a good nice, it's more of a, into what, a hollow thing. Uh, yeah, actually, a, a, a tube, a tube, just like, uh, oh, just no. like this, like, uh, oh, okay. and a little skinnier. We call them blow tube. Oh, okay. And it's a nine millimeter uh, clear glass tube, and that's oh. what you're the whole time you're spinning off a Fantastic. tube. So the whole time it's uh, centrifugal force, and this is a something that I've always liked to express is that uh, I came up with one night glass blowing is that it's uh, it's balance, focus concentration and patience and those are four things I think that once I realized in glass blowing they apply to life it has really helped me a lot just to and uh, I teach uh, friends or sometimes I actually do lessons uh, if you're contacted uh, if you contact me and um, and uh, that's a big part of it is letting people know that it's it's patience, it's waiting, and it's, it's uh, you know, and that goes hand in hand with the fact that you're never done learning, and the beginning of it, to just to start to be able to make a little tiny marble clear or anything like that, it's just, it, it's gonna be frustrating, it's gonna be hard, you, like your show, this, this beautiful show, it's a hard thing to do to create, and to make it happen constantly and uh, the same every time you know and um and different. but different exactly <laughs> it always has those aspects in there it does it's unique right? and uh and that's what i love that's another thing i love about it but but um yeah focus and uh patience is some of the biggest things i could ever ever that's what when i tell someone that's the first thing i tell them when about glass blowing if they're, i'm going to try and teach them how to make something is right. it's you're going to have to be patient and you're gonna have to really focus on balancing and focus do, on, do on being patient. I've I've probably to put it in a perspective. If say I spent a thousand dollars on glass learning, uh, and this is for any beginning glass blower or artist or anything, uh, for the first thousand dollars, say I spent on actually trying to learn how to do this and do it my own, I broke maybe. <laughs> eight hundred and fifty dollars of that you know wow. <laughs> or like eight hundred dollars and and i you know that's why i never suggest people to learn try and learn in color you know color is very uh very oh. difficult really enjoyed learning this whole art of yours it's, it's gorgeous thank and you now if anybody wanted to get a hold of you what would 
How would they get a hold of you? If you want to get a hold of me, uh, my cell phone number is 805-453-7930. And then my, and that's also my, my work number. And then uh, my email would be logalitaglassco uh, at gmail.com. Logalitaglassco at gmail.com. Yep, Great. all one word. Yeah. Awesome. I want to thank you for having oh, me on the show. You're welcome. You're welcome. Cheers. You're welcome. Cheers. And you know what's coming up next, Tim? What's coming up next? It's tutu time. Oh, tutu time. Yes, so everybody, do not adjust your TV set. Stay on Channel 17. TVSB is a great station to watch. Oh, I just received a text. Oh my goodness, you got me with my hair all in rollers. Anyway, I'm excited because tutu time is about to happen, everybody. So all the boys and girls, get ready. It's tutu time. It's tutu time. It's tutu time for the young stars of Boris. Tell me your goals. Tell me your dreams. Tutu time. Tell me your goals. Tell me your dreams at Choo Choo Time. It's Choo Choo Time and she loves you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Choo Choo Time and she loves you. Yeah. Tell me your goals. Tell me your dreams. You're the young stars of Farid. Choo Choo Time. Choo Choo Time. It's Choo Choo Time. Hello! Well, welcome to Tutu Time this month. Have a great guest, Jack Metcalf. That's right, the superstars. We love them all. How are you doing, Jack? Good. Yeah, what's going on in your life? Uh, climbing trees, skateboarding, surfing, biking, scootering, and school. So you really enjoy all the activities then? Yeah. The more things you can climb, the more things you can ride is, is up your alley. You like that, right? Yeah. Wow. And um, sometimes we talk about your um, movie career. So how's that going? Any more auditions lately? Uh, not really. No, it's a bit quiet right now? Yeah. Yeah. So what's going And who's your latest friend? Ryan Davis. Ryan. You're still seeing playing around with Ryan a lot, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. And I know that you really and truly got into skateboarding. Yeah. You like it? Yeah. Yeah. So do you do that at school a lot? No. What would you tell somebody out there that was learning to skateboard? What is the one thing you would tell them? Everybody, what you think they should know when they first start skateboarding. What is it they should know? You should move your foot and just press back with your foot. Press back with your foot. And what does that do? Well, it makes you go in a lot of speed. Oh, and it's it's good to go fast? Yeah. And what about if they were about to fall off? Is there anything you should tell people out go there? Go like this. Oh, if they're about to fall off? You yeah. You land, what, land on your, what do you mean? You pull your arms in and then you roll or something? Well, it's called an arm roll. You go like this. Oh, no, no. What are you doing? You can't <laughs> You can't get the, we can't get up and do that. You're just going to have to explain it. Use well, your mind. Well, if you're about to fall off, put your arm out first so you'll only break your arm. Oh, okay. Oh, so skateboarding is dangerous. Yeah. Oh, so you haven't had any big spills? No. Well, that's good. That's pretty fabulous, isn't it? Yes. So what's, how's school going as far as the academics? Uh, how are you enjoying your classes? It's good. What sort of classes do you do? P.E., uh, science, E. So that's uh, another activity. You love to do outside activities. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything in the classroom you like doing? Free choice. Oh. What's the free choice? Uh... You do all fun things like like this really fun game. Um, it's it's letters. I mean, it's numbers, and you try to find what numbers that make ten, oh. like nine plus one. Okay, so it, it's it's called free choice. Yeah, but 
it's sort of a game to figure out yeah. math. Yeah, math and uh, English. Yeah. Oh, okay, so you make up sentences. Wow. So, um, is there anything else? Oh, I know what. Um, didn't you have scouts? Did you? Are you still doing scouts? Yeah. Is you like scouts? Still? Yeah. Oh, that's good. And your dad's still the scout leader? No. Oh, is somebody else is doing it now? Yeah. And so, is there anything you would you like to say hello to your Grammy, your grandma? Hi, Grammy. Hi, grandma. And Skipper's out there. Hi, Skipper. Yeah. And uh, how about your dad? My dad. <laughs> and of course, your mum. Hi, mom. <laughs> anyway, so are you going to come back on two two time and yeah. tell us more about your life? All right. Say hi to Ryan, your friend. Hi, Ryan. There you go. Any other friends you should say hello to? Hi, Zachary. Okay, you're still with Zachary. I remember the name Zachary that you told us about before. Well, okay, Jack, well, let's say bye-bye from Tutu time and we'll have you, Jack come back and talk to us some more. And you be careful on your skateboard, okay? All right, bye-bye from Tutu time. Bye. bye. Tutu time and she loves you. And she loves you, yeah. Tell me your goals, tell me your dreams. You're the young stars of the reef. Two, two time, two, two time. It's two, two time. Hey, well, here we are at two, two time for another fabulous month. Yes, what a year we've had. And it's Happy New Year to everybody. Yes, it is. So I want to introduce you to somebody really special this month. Everybody may remember Angelina Bushnell. Well, this is Carrie Apple. And I'm so excited because she helped with the color guard. Both of them are captains of the Dos Poblos color guard. So welcome, Carrie. It's really nice to see you. Look at you. You look so gorgeous. Thank oh, you. Oh, my gosh. And the outfit is lovely. Thank and I know you. And Donna Rose, right, our daughter, is your coach. And it's very exciting. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, you know, are you a native Santa Barbara and or Galita person? Yeah, I'm, I'm from Santa Barbara. And I'm a sophomore in high school. And color art is just the best thing in the world. I'm so glad I got into it. I've been doing it for three years now, I guess. How is your team going? Because I know Angelina said it was doing pretty good. It's going really well. Yeah, it's going really well. We were gearing up for the main part of our competition season, so that's really exciting. After I know. January, they do Winter Guard, right? Yes. Yeah, so, and that's, you love that too? Yes, Winter Guard is so much fun. We haven't had it at Dos Pueblos in many years. I've never been in it at Dos Pueblos, but I'm really excited for this year. I think it's going to be a great season. Is, is this your last year at school? Or do you have other year, you know, I know it's Angelina's last year, right? But is yes. it yours? Yes. Angelina's a senior, but I'm only a sophomore, so I have two more years two to more go. Two more years, two more years. And you're, you're, you like school, so you're okay. What is it that you want to do when you leave school? I'm not really sure yet. I haven't been thinking about it too much. I mean, it's a little bit early to be thinking about it, do I think. Do you think it'll be in performance, or do you think...? I really hope so. I mean, I hope I'll be able to do Color Guard outside of high school. I really hope so. A lot of independent people, you know, there's independent um, groups, because I know of one is Diamante yes. that I Donna Rose used to do. So yes. that's, that's really exciting. So tell us a little bit about your family. I I live with my mom and my dad and my older brother Peter and my younger sister Phoebe and my brother he's wow I guess he's 17 and my sister she just turned 13 <laughs> Wow so it's like three of you Yes in I'm in, I'm in the middle yeah Wow and how does it like how do you like being the middle child I know <laughs> I like it sometimes <laughs> Sometimes I think maybe I was meant to be the oldest child, but so, so I do like being the middle child. It's fun to experience both being the youngest and
the oldest. Yeah, right, that's what you do. So, um, and are you, were you born in Santa Barbara, Goleta? Were you uh, born at Cottage Hospital like yes. our children? Yes, yes, <laughs> I was born at Cottage Hospital. How exciting. And your ma mother and father, did they come into Santa Barbara or were they born here? No, they weren't born here. My mom was born on the East Coast and my dad was born near Chicago. Oh, wow. So that's, that's a really good background to help push you into the things you love to do. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure your mom is just like I was, a real like PTA. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my mom likes to get involved. Yeah, the, the parents, you know, it's amazing. It's, it's so much fun though. I really enjoyed watching Color Guard and the band because Arthur was in the drum line and Donna Rose was in the color guard like you and it was a lot of fun, you know, to yeah. watch the kids really enjoy themselves and see all the competitions. So folks out there, when, uh, you know, if you've got nothing better to do, please, you know, go out there and watch the color guards from all the schools. And Kerry is from Dos Pablos High School, which is just yeah. across the road, actually, from Tutu Time, which is exciting. Very and, exciting. Uh, so tell us a little bit about you personally. Do you, what kind of other things do you do outside of school? Do you have hobbies? Um, yeah, outside, outside of Color Guard, I'm on the mock trial team. So that's a lot of fun. It's my first year. What does that mean, a mock trial team? Um, it's sort of like pretending to be lawyers and basically it's like a mock court trial and it's it's really fun so we get a case at the beginning of the year and we have to like prove our case to real judges and we were just at the Santa Barbara courthouse a couple days ago actually for our first scrimmage it was really a lot of fun well so do you get up and you act like a lawyer Yes. How exciting. That's fun. So instead of the olden days when I went to school, uh, it was debates and things like that. So now they're teaching you to actually perform as a lawyer in a court. That's kind of fun. And it's still debating. It's yeah, it is fun. I think we do have a debate team also, wow. but it's, it's a separate thing. It's less of a club and it's really, the fun part about it is it's in real courts and with real judges. So that's, it's a really? lot of fun. So yeah. our local judges actually come and, and mm -hmm. work with you guys. Hey, kudos for the Santa Barbara judges. I think that's absolutely awesome. So wonderful. And um, how about, um, what, it, what is, you know, as far as yourself in the future, what is it you think at this point? I know you don't know what career you want to do, but for the future for Carrie, what, what would that be looking like for you? What would you say? Um, well... I think I do want to keep doing Color Guard, but I also, I've always really liked math and science. Really? So I may want to go into something that's maybe like architecture or something like that. I think that would be really interesting. Wow, so maybe, you know, we'll see some of your buildings one day, is that right? Yes, I guess so. <laughs> How exciting would that be, an Apple building? <laughs> We've got an Apple online, right, but it's a different spelling. That would be really that's fun. That's exciting, that's exciting. Well, is there anything you want to tell anybody out there about Color Guard, about what it's like to be in a sophomore at school, and just share with everybody, if say they wanted to get into Color Guard, what should they do? Well, the reason Color Guard is so much fun is because it's such like a family atmosphere, and you really, everyone on the team is really a part of your family, and you get to know everyone really well, and it's like having brothers and sisters throughout the whole marching band in Color Guard. And it's just really fun if you're looking for something extra to do. And it's it's one of those things where it's like, before you join, no one really has experience tossing flags in the air. So it's it's really something that everybody, it's it's a great skill to learn. It's, it's a lot of fun. I really well, like it. There you go. So um, I think that uh, it, if you're out there and you're interested, your children are interested, want to go into the band or the color guard, you know, perhaps it's um, they don't, they're not sports people, let them try it out. They, they can be fun, right? I mean, why not, right? Yeah, why exactly. Not? You can learn to do anything nowadays. So. Yeah. Well, let's say goodbye to everybody and we'll look forward to hearing from you again. Yeah, 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 it's Tutu time and she loves you. Yeah.
everyone, you know what this segment is? Well, it's Vicky models are the brightest stars. As you can tell by the frame down there, if uh, Dan kindly would zoom in on it, you'll see that I was a model way back and I created Vicky models are the brightest stars. Yes, I'm Vicky. So what I wanted to do was every month, I needed to find a model that would be willing to be a part of Vicky Models of the Brightest Stars and be on our show every month or have other lots of different models on at different times. But it's a five minute segment and I want to introduce to you now our very first model, Ashley Cash. Go to school, and are I'm you going to work? What are you doing? Right now I'm just trying to go to school. Going That's to school. Better. Like high school or? No, college. College. college You're going yeah. to Santa Barbara City College or? Alan Hancock. Alan Hancock, no, oh, because you live in Lompoc. Yeah, right. I live in Lompoc. Right. That's what you're wearing right now. Is it something you found and, and yourself? Make yeah, I had to dig through a lot of clothes to find this one. It's just, it's all one piece. Well, it is very it? comfortable. It's so anyway, let's say goodbye for a moment from Vicky Models of the Brightest Stars and Ashley say goodnight today. Goodnight. Hi everybody, I'm so glad you're still on TVSB. Obviously you are, because you're listening to me. Yay! Yeah, I'm Ravel, singer-songwriter. And uh, the, this part of the Mini Woodstock Festival is the artist segment, which is all, everything but within the musical realm. So it's very exciting, because today um, is very special to me, because as you know, the very first Mini Woodstock Festival was actually in this segment, started with a comedian. Yes, our very own, who we love very, very much, Carol Metcalf. The gentleman that I have with us tonight is a great comedian, so I've heard, and I find him very funny on Facebook sometimes. So his name is Jeff Vachon. Yes, thank you. Is that you. correct? That's correct. Are you French? Uh, uh, my family is French. I'm not French, but I do speak a smattering of French. Really? Yeah. I do too. Voulez-vous coucher avec moi ce soir? Oh, mais certainement, mon chéri. <laughs> Oh. Yes, we just went to bed together. That's all I ever knew in France, and I had a blast. Well, that's all you need to know. <laughs> anyway, so Jeff, I'm glad you made it, and I just you. found out that he's also a friend of Ben Ariana's. Yes. Who's a great friend of ours, and, and we loved having him live with us at the Dream Machine. He was in the co-op for a while, living here, and played bass with us. So mm. we all had fun at the Mini Woodstock Festival. But today isn't about me. This interview is all about Jeff. Jeff is our star artist, and to add wonderful flavor to it, he's a comedian. And I'm just so excited, you know, to bring Jeff to us tonight. And so, Jeff, I have a comedy side to me that comes out, and Carol will tell you it pops out. And uh, so Actually, perhaps you it. can focus it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, here's, here's to your visit, Jeff, and cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Cheer. I'm so glad you... I mean, it's a long way. You came from Oxnard, and i got to hand it to you. It's nice that you took the trouble to come all this way well, it wasn't to nice. be a funny man and to be our star in the artist segment of the Mini Woodstock Festival. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. It wasn't really that far and there was no traffic, so. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, yeah. tell us what you think about it so far. I think it's wonderful. I think it's a wonderful concept. I think you were a wonderful host. And, um, and I think there should be more things like this throughout the country. I think there is going to be, and there is a, getting more and more and more. I'm noticing lots of things you know, are stemming off from my idea and they're going in their own pursuit, but that's good, you know? Uh -huh. Yes. You know, everybody needs to do their dreams and this is where we're at right now, everybody. We're at the Dream Machine USA in the ABG Studios, Mini Woodstock TV um, Studios, and of course the Guitar Junkie Lounge. There's so many things that come out of this wonderful space. It's right. amazing. And I'm just excited because I just, do not adjust the TV sets either, guys, because Jeff is going to do a stand-up for us. It'll be a quick one, a short one, but he's going to do it, and I'm very excited about that. Thank you. And there won't be any audience, and there won't be any applause, but... Oh, well, we don't know if there won't be any audience. We never know, because we did put the word out there. Okay. It's out there on the well, I mean Facebook. Right, well, I mean right here. There won't be any audience. We don't know. We, we don't Carol know had an audience. Really? She had five or six people, didn't she, on the very first one. Oh. So this is something Guitar Junkie Lounge, we'll have to talk it over with Dan Orr because okay. Guitar Junkie Lounge actually is his. So whatever he decides to have come in through it, uh -huh. 
Maybe we'll get people to come in and we'll have private people and they'll all pay $5. I mean, Carol's good at getting the $5 out of everybody, so well, maybe we can well, put it up to 10 <laughs> well, 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 if we can get like 10,000 people in here at $10 a piece. Then oh, no, no, no. There's, defi <laughs> no. there's definitely going to be a ceiling. Oh, I'm going to have one of these. Have one of these. These are so okay, okay, good. But, okay, but I cannot eat hot, spicy stuff. No, this isn't hot, spicy. This is, is that a pickle? This is a cheese. Okay. This is a really good recipe, and it's something I brought into Santa Barbara into my life. And I was taught it in mm. Australia by Henry, I think, what mm. I told you. Anyway, it was a good idea he came up with, which is Ritz cracker, cheese, cheddar cheese, tomato, and a pickle. And yeah. these are great with, with uh, alcohol. It's fabulous. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. mm. Do you have a napkin? Oh, oh thank you, Dan. Yes, thank you, Dan. Uh, we never thought about that before, did we? We'll have to have fancy, pretty ones That's on never here. Never happened before. That no, before. nobody's ever asked for a napkin. They must be wiping no. it all over themselves or mm. on the bottom of my tablecloth. <laughs> now everybody out there wants to hear about mm. you. Okay. Tell us about you. Well, what do you want to know about? I want to know where you were born, and you know your little bit of life when you you know were a young chappy growing up, whatever, and why comedy. And who decided to inspire you that way? So just tell okay. us about yourself. You know, you're our star tonight. You know, I grew up in, um, I was born in uh, Ashland, Massachusetts, which is a little town right outside of Boston. And, um, you know, I had a, uh, a fairly eventful childhood. For some reason, I was the one that everyone wanted to bully. Oh, dear. And, um, you know, that was when I was very young. Were you smaller or something than everybody else? I, I, I was a little smaller. I was a little weaker. You know, you know, I couldn't run very fast. And then... Um, so you weren't a sportsman? I, wa I, I wasn't when I was very young, no. No, but then as I got older, you know, I, I, I decided I was tired of being picked on. But one thing that being picked on did was, was it developed my sense of humor. You know, they could come at with me with their fists, but I could give them words that would knock them right off their sock. Remember any of those times? You know, my mother used to do it to me sometimes. My mother's still alive, and she'll probably be watching this, so I'm uh, not going to say anything. I mean, my mother's a wonderful person, but I remember when I was 10 years old, she said to me, Jeffrey, if your head wasn't attached, it would roll around on the floor. And I said, well, Mom, so would yours if it wasn't attached. <laughs> it's a good thing they're stuck on there, isn't it? <laughs> well, that's the other thing, too. It goes from one gene to another, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so you kind of grew up in a situation that, that made you go internalize a little bit, or what, uh, what happened I, next? I would say I internalized a little bit. And, um, but why did you, was comedy your outlet? Because I know I had trauma as a child, and my outlet was to be funny because, well, my family went to Australia when I was 13, mm. and that was like a horrific age to go. Where did they go from? From England, to, from London. So, okay, the Beatles and mods and everything was just all happening. Right. It was 62, and, you know, it was all just going crazy, and then we emigrated to Australia. Okay. And then I was, like, out in the bush. Well, I was 30 miles from Sydney, but it was really still very bushy with a creek at the bottom of the road and things like that and uh -huh. and I went to school there and everybody seemed like they were all giants I was like this little <laughs> English girl and I was tiny you know why am I why am I playing with this dog get out of here what is that but he's been, he's taking over the the filming again. He's, <laughs> he's takes, he has to be a star. Well, well, I mean, he's got an attitude. Well, I'm surprised I didn't even know me. dogs had attitudes. Because Jeff is so fascinating, and I was having fun with him a lot in the artist section, we are going to get Lucy Looker to interview Jeff for a good half hour for the Lucy Looker Unchained, but also for the mini Woodstock will be 15. So all of you that love to see Jeff, you know, do stay tuned because we are going to give you um, a stand-up and we'll put a stand-up in the Lucy Looker segment and we'll find out more about Jeff. So, okay. Okay, so I'm okay. thank you so much for well, coming, thank you, Jeff. Thank, it's thank been you. great. It's been wonderful. It has. It has. And, you know, okay. drive yourself back to all the way to Oxnard and all your family over there and everybody that loves you. Okay. Be careful. Give our love to Ben Arianas and Ooh. tell him we'd love to have him on the music section. And I'll tell him that he's got to come here. Oh, there you go. There yeah. you go. Did you hear that, Ben? All right, then. Ben? So everybody. Yeah, Ben, you listening? Here. Are you listening? 
Get over here, Ben. <laughs> there you go, see? So anyway, everybody. Okay, well, thank you so much. All right, take care now. Okay. Out here, like to fly. I'm sure everybody flies sometimes, right? Do you fly, sir? Yeah. Yes, you do. Okay, you know, and uh, have you ever encountered TSA? Of course yeah, you have, right? Yeah, sure. Right, and I'll tell you something. TSA has it in for me, or, or out for me. Every time I fly, at least the past six or seven times I've flown, they take me aside, they rip apart my luggage. It's called random screening. Well, how do I always get the random screening? Wow. And not only that, but you know, but I was, uh, I was bringing my stuff through the, uh, through the terminal, you know, you know, and the guy was going through it, and he pulls out my uh, shaving cream. And he says, sir, we're going to have to confiscate this. And I said, my shaving cream? Why? Well, sir, it's, you're only allowed up to four ounces in a can. This is 4.6 ounces. So I said, well, there's only four ounces in it. There's less than four ounces in it. I'm sorry, sir, but you're going to have to give us the can. <laughs> okay, okay, you got my can, all right? All right, you got it. So he takes this can and he puts it into this trash barrel that's full of like 20,000 other bottles of stuff that he's confiscated over the course of a day. Now, let's see if this makes any sense. Okay, he's confiscating it because he thinks it might be some sort of cleverly designed explosive. So he puts thousands of these things inside a trash barrel <laughs> right next to the terminal where thousands of people are checking their bags every hour. Why don't they take this stuff and put it into a, a chute or something that will drop it three miles down into the earth where it won't hurt anybody? Yeah. Because if even one of those bottles explodes, it will set off an explosion that will light up all the other bottles in the can, thus causing incredible death and destruction. Yes. Much worse than anything yes. you will find on an airplane. Oh, my God. <laughs> and you know, and peop people, at, uh, people at the airport are totally humorless. <laughs> totally human. I, I was going through the uh, through the metal scanner, and I beeped. Oh no, I beeped. But you know the thing is, he comes up to me and he says, "Sir, hold out your arms." They they had already done the whole full body scan. They didn't find anything there. Hold out your arms, sir. Okay. And he's going over me with the wand and comes down to my ass and starts beeping. Oh. Sir, what do you have in your back pocket? And I said, "Well, nothing. I guess I just have buns of steel." <laughs> and, and he's and he's. And he said, sir, I'm going to ignore that remark. <laughs> I said, why? It's funny. You're supposed to laugh. Sir, if you say that again, I'm going to have to give you a strip search. And he did say this. <laughs> so I says, okay, let's just forget I said anything, okay? Okay. I don't know what that was in my back pocket or what was in my ass that was causing it to beep. And I may never know. And per personally, I think it's really none of my business at this point. But, you know, I encounter a lot of humorless people and people who take things the wrong way. We've all met people like that, right? Right. For example, you know, I used to work with this guy and I remember one day I went into work and I said to him, hey, uh, Tom, it's a, it's a nice shirt you're wearing. And he says, what do you mean by that? So I said, what do I mean by that? I mean, it's a nice shirt. He says, what, do you think I usually wear ugly shirts? <laughs> <laughs> oh, pardon me, I forgot. You have no sense of humor. <laughs> Excuse me. And he didn't find that funny at all. Of course, he didn't find anything funny. I could come up with my biggest zinger. The guy would stand there. <laughs> and before we go, I just want to leave you all with this one thought. Thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> the dream machine, USA. Woo! Thank you. <laughs> well, hello. Welcome to the musician segment this month. And I'm very excited because it's 2015. Cheers, everybody out there. Hope you had a great Christmas and a great New Year. And oh my goodness, here we are, Mini Woodstock Festival for the third year. Very, very excited. And my guest excites me no end. He has so much in the music field and in the film industry. Oh my goodness, this guy would probably be known a lot around Santa Barbara. His name is Jesse Rhodes. Let's hear all about Jesse today. Welcome, Jesse. I'm so glad you made it. It's awesome that you got here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, it's, it's very difficult to get musicians to come in and, and tell us about yourselves, you know? Um, and I know you're a local fellow, right? Yes. You were born here? He is a local chap. I went to school with a lot of you probably, right? What school did you go to? Um, San Marcos. Yeah, the Royals! 
Alex Chantes, and uh, who else went there? Nick, I think, I don't know, a lot of, lot of people went to... Um, UCSB Denmark. too. Did you really? Mm. So let's hear all about yourself. Don't be shy. Mm. You know how musicians are, they're so shy. Tell us all about yourself, Jesse. You were born here, your family, your siblings. Tell us about you. Well, I'm a big fan of coasters. Look at these Oh, that's coasters. from Australia. That's from my friend, Nolene. These are fantastic. She was on here a couple of years ago. It's like an artistic, it's like an artistic... Uh, Aborigine. It's the Aboriginals. It's like, uh, you know, the kangaroo. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's Aborigines did that. I wasn't sure. Did you zoom in on that then? So the, yeah, what yeah, Jesse's yeah. talking yeah. about? Yeah. I know, Nolene was my dancing partner. Many, many years ago, we did go-go uh, -go dancing. We both worked at the ABC wow. in Australia, the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. Wow. And on the side, we used to go dancing all over Australia. We were sent to, to sheep shearers, balls, and everything to dance. But this isn't about me. This is about well, you. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Let's hear about Jesse. So what made you get into the music industry, Jesse? Well... I just have always been drawn towards music. Okay. And my mother played cello in the symphony, in the Santa Barbara Symphony for Wow, really? For thirty or forty years. Would people know her here? Yeah. Well, Ali tell us. Alita Rhodes. Rhodes. Alita Rhodes. That yes. does sound familiar, I must say. Yeah, she's a great cello player. Tell me though, as far as your music genre, you know, or drop why do you say that word? Genre. Genre. Genre, thank you. I say It's a French word, I believe. Yeah, I yeah. say it right sometimes, other times I don't. I don't even know what that word means out there, because there may be a few of you, because I was there once. Genre means the type of music. Maybe you do folk, maybe you do jazz, maybe you do rock and roll. What is it that you love to do, Jesse? Well, I'm glad you asked that, Ravel. Many different kinds of genres. I did, I did a record with Warner Brothers a few years back, and um, it was hard rock. Wow. You know, mixed in with some acoustic stuff, but that was called Stegosaurus. It was a, I had a band called Stegosaurus. So you were playing the circuit, Stegosaurus? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. But um, when was that then? That was back in the late 90s. Nice. As, as we are, was really playing too. Yeah. Dan and I, and, and now I, we came out in the 90s with our music. That was awesome. So you might, hey, anybody out there that's a Stegosaurus fan, here we have Jesse. What did you play in that band? Were you, what I, was played, your I played guitar and sang. Nice. And I wrote the songs, yeah. Okay, it's exciting. And played a little of everything, actually. So played. were you all original stuff, or was it yeah, other, other I, stuff too? Yeah, I wrote the songs for it, and... and um, we recorded it up in Seattle and nice. and uh, got to be in some really nice big studios up there and down in L.A. and it was fun. It was a good experience. Um, but you are uh, you're actually a, um, a local chap, though. So how yeah. did it happen that you went to Seattle? Well, at the time there was a lot of great music being made up there, and uh, I wanted to get as far away from Los Angeles as possible <laughs> because. Uh, that's where the record company was. I wanted to get away from them and make the record, and so we went up there to Seattle. My father's from Washington State, and oh. um, so I spent a lot of time up there as a kid. So it was your dad and mom that came here and settled here and had their family. Do you exactly. Have, yeah. So you have siblings? I mean, I do. Or are you the only child? I have an older brother and a younger sister. Oh, great! And they're in Santa Barbara they're, too. Well, yeah. Well, say hello to them out there. Hi, Chris. Hi, Mary Beth. <laughs> Hi, Mom and Dad. There you go. It's always so much fun. So my sister is actually a violin teacher. Oh, my goodness. And she's played in the symphony before, and she plays wow. all over as well. So. Gosh, so the most recent is this new record that isn't quite finished yet. I done, that's the last one that's done, but I'm working on one that, oh, that okay. I don't have the product here, but it's just about done. Okay, and do you have a name for that that's coming uh, it's, out? It's, I think it's going to be called Love or Fear. Okay, so Something Jess is like constantly that. working on products, and this is the very last one, but he's got one in the bag, so to speak, that he's working on right now. I'm very excited about it. It'll be released it's... in the next few months, I guess. Yeah. Looking forward to Definitely. it. So. And are you playing anywhere locally around town? Is that one of the things you want to do? Or, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I play at Soho often. I love Soho. Okay, and so you've already probably got a fan base at Soho, everybody. See, thank you for being our musician for the first month in 2015. Well, thanks for having me, Ravel. Oh, you're welcome. We're really excited. Now, don't adjust your TV sets. You stay on TVSB because we're going to have a jam now with Jesse. 
Keep watching the Mini Woodstock Festival and Happy New Year for 2015, everybody. Woo. Can you even believe that? I can. 2015. Let's jam, everyone. Bring it on. Bring it on. <laughs>
Down the Soho, meet Joe. Not the top, 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 not the